This is the third update for the Maelstrom fan controller. And in order to understand my decision right now on moving ahead, I want to kind of rewind and go back through the different processes for building and launching a product uh, that exists today. So most people think that the kind of conventional idea revolves around, I have an idea, I see a problem, I may have a solution and I build a prototype. Then I refine that prototype, design for manufacture, go through designing molds, designing tooling, designing assembly processes, uh, production firmware, all this type of stuff, mass produce it, make sales, make bank, make money. It's not really that simple. In a lot of the cases, somewhere in this conventional process, they'll do things like market tests without telling people what they're doing. Um, and this conventional idea has kind of fallen out of favor, especially for innovative new ideas, things that don't exist. This works very well for when you're refining a product, when you're entering a new product into an existing marketplace where there's already uh, market forces and you understand that market. When you're making something new, you usually are moving towards uh, the lean startup methodology is a good one. And the idea behind it is test, review, refine. So this is what's kind of led to that explosion of crowdfunding websites because they allowed people to test ideas before they were really baked, before they were actually products. And that's where even today, Indiegogo at the idea stage, you can spend a million dollars making a fancy video and renders and stuff like that, but there's no product behind a lot of these tech ideas. There's renders, there, there's nice high production value videos, but there's no engineering team and there's no uh, manufacturing team, there's no manufacturing house. And this is where a lot of them fail is that they start from the, I have an idea and wouldn't it be cool without knowing if it's technically feasible, but also not understanding the cost of solving that problem. Um, the amount of effort I put into the fan controller right now may seem minuscule, but if I was to charge that out in contractor rate, it would be tens of thousands of dollars. It would not be insignificant. So the lean startup is you have an idea, find a way to test the market. So Indiegogo and Kickstarter were those initial methods. Kickstarter's changed a bit now and they won't really allow you to do anything until down here. But they test the market and if they're strong market reception, they may proceed. They may proceed with refining and changing the idea a little bit and more market testing. This can be a landing page, this can be customer interviews, this can be um, all sorts of different things. Or they pivot. They don't see a market. We still have this idea, but we need to see, maybe you have to change the market, maybe we have to change the idea, and they can loop back. Once they get to the prototype stage, that's where things like Kickstarter is now allowing things back on. And um, things like 3D printing kind of make that area kind of gray. Because if I have a physical mock-up that costs $200, is that a prototype? It doesn't work. It looks like something, but is it a prototype? Well, currently they're letting that on it. But then you go through the same process, design for man manufacture, manufacture, sales. I throw myself into the mix. I like understanding and using something. And if I think it's cool and it's something I would use, then I'm more likely to proceed because I'm also usually in the target demographic for the product that I'm working on. So I start with an idea then I go to a prototype. So the fan controller that's been on my desk that I've been using for many, many months is my prototype. I have functional firmware. It's not as good as I'd like. I have functional hardware. It keeps getting better. And then I tested the market. Once I actually had something I could show, I tested the market. And many people went to the landing page and saw a 3D render. Yeah. But I actually had functional hardware behind it. Uh, I didn't really need to show it off because I was understanding where that market data was coming from. If it came from my YouTube video, they saw I had functional hardware. If they came from Ray Maker, from his, uh, end of the week shout out, which I super appreciate, then I knew that they were trusting a reviewer. And if they came to the landing page from my ads that I paid for, then I knew that they were just liking the concept and an idea. And there's actually hugely different results from those three things. 
But I'm at now at this point of proceed and because it uses AC power, it's making things a little complicated. I'll talk a little more about that in a second. But I'm at a point where refine, prototype, or pivot, and potentially just proceed. These ideas are not um, kind of exclusive. You can do multiple ones. But in some cases, I, I don't have it written here, you could just ditch it. You can just quit the idea. And what I've already said is I don't like quitting something without giving something back to the people who have been interested and invested. And so for me, that is if I abandon the project, it goes full open source. With the proceed, um, manufacturing, certifications, all get very expensive. So let's talk a little bit about where the project is at and what I'm going to do next. So let's show off this prototype I've got going on here right now. Right now, um, we've got an IEC with a fuse on one side and a different IEC connector. And you guessed it, universal compatibility for fans. That's right, everything is now 120 to 240, 50 and 60 hertz compatible. And you can buy these little pigtails, plug them in and bam, it'll work in the UK, it'll work in EU. Um, on the other side, obviously, you've got your regular IEC kind of computer. Um, I think it's a C13 connector and you plug that in. And yeah, it's got that little fuse right next to it. And so that's kind of what it looks like. It's actually pretty close to the renders. It's going to get the buttons and the LEDs shortly after the, the board arrives. So one of the really important things was isolating the AC over here from the DC and it's done with a little transformer. And you know, so there's only current, but there's no electrical connection between the two sides. So just to show that off, I'm going to show you that there's some connectivity on the AC side. It takes a little while because it's high resistance. There we go. But there's no connectivity to the DC side. So it's fully electrically isolated. Nothing, nothing. And try with the other pin just for good measure. Nothing, nothing. But when we check the, the DC side, sure enough, yes, there's connectivity. So just trying to show off that, I mean, I'm thinking a lot about safety here. Don't want any of these things kind of blowing up on people. So it's just connectivity between the two sides by uh, a transformer. So I've been running this for a while. You can see it's a 3.3 volt output from the module. I think I've been running it for two months now and uh, it's been plugged in all this time. So 120 volts on the other side. So yeah, um, it's isolated. All right, so I wanted to show off what's actually in here because it's not actually complete, unfortunately. So I had to find a case supplier, one that can actually do cutouts and openings. Um, I've manually made the cutouts in these, so they're kind of rough, but they've assured me that they can do them in volume or low volume. Inside, uh, we've got these frames that are 3D printed that hold the dimmer board. Um, I haven't gone to my own design on this. And I don't think I will, not initially. I've got that isolated power supply and I figured out how much room I have down in the bottom for um, the circuit board, which then there'll be the cutouts for, it's looking like three buttons, three LEDs. And yeah, so this is kind of, designed to be universal so it can slide in either way. So um, that's kind of what's on the inside yet. Uh, right now it's just a, kind of a circuit board design that needs to happen and or be finalized I should say. And then uh, I've got all the parts and tools in house to make up a handful of those units. The last few months most of the development has actually been in the firmware realm and it's actually not been 100% of my time, so it's been going a little slower than I'd expect. The reason for this has to do with the certification costs. The initial certification costs are actually quite excessive. Um, to get a regulatory body involved in finding a manufacturer, it's the outlay of tens of thousands for certification, but also committing to tens of thousands of dollars for manufacturing. And that kind of blows all of my expected startup budget. So what are my options? Ditch the project and open source it, 
Kickstarter it, which I don't like doing, not at this stage because there's too much risk involved, and potentially trying to connect with a larger company and maybe have them do it. I'm not ready for that last stage, so what I've been doing is working on the firmware to ensure that I'm not getting into feature creep, but the basics are already there so that whether I open source it or whether I deliver this in some capacity, things are ready to go. So that includes things like the triggering and the AMP plus receive have been done a while ago. Um, improvements to 50 and 60 hertz detecting has almost been figured out, but I don't have a 50 hertz supply, so I need to look for that to test it. So I'm getting stuck on things that I need to test. I have a cooldown algorithm so that when you stop riding, it doesn't just shut off and it's kind of proportional to the time you spent riding. Um, but it's not really been tested with people, so I need to test that with more people in order to refine that a little bit because I don't want to have multiple options on the cooldown. Uh, peering, pretty much done. Uh, right now it's a little bit dumb. If you unplug it, it's going to forget what it's paired to and whatever the first thing it sees, it will pair to. In most use cases, probably okay, but I need to do a little bit of work on that. Um, wireless firmware update. Surprisingly, for multiple projects I've been working on, I needed this, so that's done. LEDs and buttons are really just kind of config and user experience. So where does this all leave us with the process? How to launch a product? Well, I've already hit here, and the certification costs are astronomical. Essentially, in order to get it certified for Canada, US, and maybe Europe, I'm looking at between 20 and 30,000 US dollars. That's not including the mandatory connection to a manufacturer that is ISO certified, which they also want kind of 70 to 100 percent of that same price. So it, it can, it's a potential outlay of 50 to 60 thousand dollars in order to get through certification and a manufacturer who is going to gear up to do this. So that would give me the, I would work on DFM, certification, and manufacturing, and this all kind of ties together around 60,000 US dollars. It's a bit much for this project. Then I could go into sales, but my market data currently shows it costs me $30 for every single sale. So it's already a point where I'm not doing, you know, quarter of a million units, I'm doing a thousand, two thousand, five thousand units. And people are, some people, a handful of Kelly complain that the price is too high um, at 70 US dollars or 69 US dollars per unit. So the option I'm actually looking at is to initiate a proto sales method. So they are a uncertified prototype. Some work would be required by the end user potentially to install firmware via like Bluetooth firmware update. It wouldn't come preloaded. Potentially, I'm not sure the regulations just yet, but it means that the user is assuming some level of liability. They have some level of skill. Um, they've seen, understand it. And this is kind of how the hobbyist community works. So essentially it's using people who would want to be early adopters, but have some technical skill and background to jump on board and grab one of these units. Yes, there's risks involved and I'm trying to mitigate them by showing exactly I'm using fully isolated power supplies. I'm putting a fuse in it. I mean, heck, Weller soldering irons don't even have a fuse in it. This was a big issue by uh, the guys at EV, EV blog and uh, Lewis Rossman did videos on lack of fuses. So I'm adding in those layers, but they're not going to be certified. And proto sales, with sufficient proto sales, then I can engage a consultant to help me through the DFM specifically related to the required certification. So materials re certifications are required. Um, sourcing certifications are required just to get things like UL and CSA. At that point, once that's paid for, I might look at crowdfunding. The difference being is there's hardware already in queue that can immediately go out as soon as those certifications are achieved. Or again, if they are kind of the early adopter, technical tinker kind of people. Going this route, I think I'm going to have to open source it. And that's kind of scary because there are companies out there that can immediately come in and swoop in and then take this project from me. But I think the risk is kind of worth it. So 
If you are, um, eventually I'm going to throw out a link to the Tindy store, which I, I think is how I'm going to um, do the proto sales. And more than welcome for anyone to purchase it there. Those are going to be uh, low volume builds. So um, they may not be perfect. They may not have the greatest aesthetics, but you've kind of seen where I'm at. And hopefully with that, um, yeah, if you're still interested and keep watching for more updates. Thanks.